Now, there might be fresh hope for millions of people affected by sickle cell disease. In the U.S., a new commercially licensed gene therapy has been administered for the first time to a patient. It could be a game changer in the fight against this disorder of unusually shaped red blood cells that can disrupt the victim's blood flow. This leads to severe health complications, including chronic pain and organ damage, which can also be life-threatening. Now, the genetic condition is found around the world, but mainly among people with West or Central African backgrounds. According to the World Health Organization, 1,000 children are born with the disease every day in Africa, and the existing treatments can be rare and expensive. But let's take a look at how one Ugandan woman is living with the disease and sharing hope. When Barbara Nabulo was a little girl, her parents simply wrote her off. Diagnosed with sickle cell anemia at two months, for them, it meant their child wouldn't be around for long enough to be worth the bother. These children, they used to die so soon. By the way, you have to work so hard. All the time, you have to look. Her mother even referred to her as half a daughter. Barbara says she was left hating herself. They never thought of me as an important person, like someone who would grow up or is supposed to get an education. Because they used to tell my mother that people like me don't grow, that we can't go to school or have children. But now Barbara's parents are proud of their daughter because she's proven them wrong. She's married and has three children. Her firstborn, a son, is now seven, and the twin girls came last year. Age 37, Barbara is still a regular patient at the Mabala Regional Hospital in Uganda's remote eastern highlands. But she's passing on her knowledge of how to live with sickle cell disease. Her personal story of survival is often a first glimpse of hope for newly diagnosed children and their worried parents. And she's also getting treatment. Hydroxyurea reduces the number of bouts of pain and the need for blood transfusions, all helping to overcome the stigma. We used to be so frustrated, you know. You care for a child, then they reach like 12 years, and they get so many complications. And even you, you start wishing and saying, ah, this, this child, so because of that trauma, eh? Hydroxyurea has now changed it. Like, it improves on the what? On the quality of life of these patients. New gene therapies offer promise. One was approved in the US last year. Yet, despite the hope, they are also enough to trigger despair. For a single patient course of treatment, the cost runs into millions of dollars. Joining us now is Obiageli Nodu, a professor of hematology and blood transfusion and the director of the Center for Sickle Cell Disease Research and Training at the University of Abuja. Good to have you on the program, Professor. Now, looking at the emergence of new treatments uh, for sickle cell disease, surely this, these developments must inspire hope considering how long the disease has posed a threat. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, many people are quite uh, excited, you know, to think that uh, there can be curative uh, treatment for sickle cell disease. Of course, we've had uh, things like bone marrow transplantation, you know, for some time. But these treatments are not uh, available to the majority of people. So it's hope on one side that there is a possibility. And then a lot of, uh, uh, you know, despair you know, from high budget countries, because even the evidence-based interventions that have been available for some time is not available to majority of, of people. Um, you know, interventions such as newborn screening, uh, 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 you know, uh, prophylaxis for infection, hydroxyurea treatment, uh, basic things like patient education, mm. these are not yet available to majority of people. So there is hope on one side, you know, but it's like a moonshot away People feel, oh, when am I going to be able to even dream, you know, right. with those hefty uh, uh, price tags of, of, of uh, uh, accessing uh, 
these uh, interventions like gene therapy and even bone marrow transplantation. One of the challenges you mentioned earlier was that of the, the cost uh, when it comes to, uh, um, to treatment, but I'm assuming research as well. Um, what are the practical considerations for implementing these new therapies in a place like Nigeria? Okay, so the Global Gene uh, Therapy Initiative has actually been considering this over the, you know, since 2019. Uh, this is a network of, of people who are concerned that uh, these therapies, when they become available, may not become available to the people with the right high resource people. So they've looked, they've been able to work, work out uh, very carefully what, what the barriers, what is it that is driving the cost. And uh, most of it has to do with manufacturing in a centralized uh, facility. That's the gene therapy product. And uh, we've been able to find out that when you manufacture close to the place of care, it drives down the cost. So this has happened. This has been carefully worked out by different partners. And uh, the trial site has been the Velo Christian College in, uh, in, uh, in India. Um, uh, uh, Velo Christian Medical College in India. And they've been able to do CAR2 therapy under $35,000, which is a far cry, you know, from the very high, you know, in the millions. And what has been done, you know, it, uh, can also be replicated. Uganda uh, is also, you know, working out uh, the possibility of doing a trial, clinical trial. So clinical trial could be one way of, of you know, bringing, down the cost, but place of care, you know, manufacturing the gene products at the place of care is one way, you know, to drive down the cost. And effort is going on in that direction. Is there a kind of global consensus, a way that the, the world can, can address this collectively to make sure that there is, a, a, you know, make sure that there's a more accessible um, treatment to, to the people who need it? The WHO has established, has been able to develop a framework for uh, treatment centers and centers of excellence. In other words, we cannot just say, okay, go all the way to gene therapy when the evidence-based interventions, you know, things like education is not in place in majority of the places. So yes, we can aspire to do gene therapy, but what we know now works now should be available, you know, to majority of people. Uh, for instance, yeah. hydroxyurea, uh, 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 blood transfusion, all of these things, and then just education of people because, you know, uh, people can do well, patients can do well if they know uh, optimal hydration, you know, the evidence-based intervention, and they have it, and, you know, right. the healthcare workers know how to give their, these interventions. So we start, you know, from what is available now, and then we work towards those uh, curative therapies in future. Okay. Professor Obiageli Nodu, head of the University of Abuja's Center for Sickle Cell Disease Research and Training. Thank you very much for your insights. Yeah, you're welcome.